Hey guys, Mr. Bagberg here. This is lesson 7.1. We're talking about linear and nonlinear systems of equations. Three objectives for this video. We're going to use substitution to solve linear and nonlinear systems of equations. We're going to use graphing to solve linear and nonlinear systems of equations. And we're going to use systems of equations to model and solve real life problems. In this first example, we're going to solve this system using substitution. Now remember, for substitution, the first thing we want to do is take one of our equations and isolate a variable, get a variable all by itself. So I'm going to work with this top equation right here, and we typically solve for y, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to subtract the x over to the right-hand side, so then our equation says y equals 4 minus x. And then what I'm going to do, we've got this y equals. In our second equation where that y variable is, I'm just going to take our other information and we can replace that y variable with this 4 minus x. So then our second equation says x minus, here's where we're doing that substitution, 4 minus x, and that equals 2. Now to start cleaning this up, I'm going to distribute this negative through our parentheses and then combine like terms. So x plus x is 2x and then we've got minus 4 equals 2. If we add this 4 over to the right hand side, we get 2x equals 6, and if we divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 3. Now we're not quite done because we do need to figure out what our y variable is, so now we need to take this 3x value and plug it back into either one of our equations, and I'm actually gonna use this one on the right hand side where we already got y all by itself. I'm going to take this 3 and plug it in for our x right there. So we get y equals 4 minus 3. So we get y equals 1. Then we can write this answer as an ordered pair. x value is 3, y value is 1. So here is our answer. It's the point 3, 1. Next example is a little bit of an application problem, and we're going to solve this one using substitution. So let's read through it first. A total of $12,000 is invested in two funds. The first fund pays 5% and the second pays 3%. Uh, we're going to use simple interest. So here's our formula for simple interest. Interest equals the principal times the rate times time. After one year, we get $500 in interest and we want to figure out how much is invested at each rate. So before we can start solving, we need to set up some equations based on this information. And here's what I'm seeing first. We've got a total of $12,000 split between two funds. And I'm just going to give those funds names. I'm going to call the first fund X and I'm going to call the second fund Y. And it says our total amount that we're investing. So we're going to add those things together. The total amount is $12,000. There's our first equation. The second piece, it says that the first account pays 5%, the second account pays 3%, and we had a total interest for the year of $500. So let's say this X first account is the one that paid 5%. When we start setting this up, we do want to turn that percent into a decimal, so I'm going to make it 0 0.05, and the way we figure out how much interest is earned is we multiply it by the amount of money in the account, so 0.05X. Then we also have this other account where we're getting 3%, so 0 0.03. We're going to multiply that by our Y value, and at the end of the year, when we add up this interest amount, we had $500. So there's our second equation, 0.05x plus 0.03y equals 500. Now, before we start solving, I don't like dealing with these decimal numbers, so I'm going to make it a little bit easier to work with. Since these decimals are to the hundredths place, I'm going to multiply by 100 to make things a little bit easier. If we take 100 times 0.05x, we get 5x. If we take 100 times 0.03y, we get 3y, and 100 times 500 should give us 50,000. And now I think it'll be a little bit easier for us to solve because there's no longer those decimals in there. I'm going to take this top equation and do a little rewriting. I'm going to subtract the x over to the right-hand side. So we get the equation y equals 12,000 minus x and we're going to do our substitution. So we've got y all by itself, so that's where we're going to do that plugging in. So we're going to take that 12,000 minus x and plug it in right there for our y value. So we get 5x plus 3 times 12,000 minus x, and that equals 50,000. 
if we distribute the 3 to both of those things, we get 5x plus 36,000 minus 3x equals 50,000. Combining like terms, we've got 5x minus 3x, so that's 2x plus 36,000 equals 50,000. Subtracting that 36,000 over to the right-hand side, we get 2x equals 14,000. And then last step is to divide by 2, so we get x equals 7,000. Now I'm going to jump back up to the top. In this equation where we had y equals 12,000 minus x, we just said that our x value was 7,000. So if we take 12,000 minus 7,000, then our y value for this one has to be 5,000. Here's another substitution problem. We've got x squared plus 4x minus y equals 7, and 2x minus y equals negative 1. I'm going to work with this second equation and rearrange it. I'm going to subtract the 2x over. So we get negative y equals negative 1 minus 2x. And I'm going to divide everything by negative 1 to get rid of that negative on our y. So we get y equals 1 plus 2x. And then we've got y all by itself. So we're going to replace the y in our top equation. So doing that, we get x squared plus 4x minus, here's what we're replacing, 1 plus 2x, and that equals 7. I'm going to distribute that negative, and then we'll combine some like terms. So we've got 4x and negative 2x. So x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 7. Now this is a quadratic. We've got an x squared, so we need to have a 0 on one side. I'm going to subtract the 7 over to the left-hand side. So x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. This is a good time to factor. Inside of our parentheses, we'll get x plus 4 and x minus 2 equals 0. After we get it factored out, we need to take each factor and set it equal to 0. So x plus 4 equals 0. Solving that one, we'll get x equals negative 4. If we take x minus 2 and set that one equal to 0, we'll get x equals 2. Since we've got two x values, we need to plug them both in to get two y values. So we're going to use this equation right here where we've got y equals 1 plus 2x. If we replace the x with a negative 4, then our equation says y equals 1 plus 2 times negative 4. Well, we know that 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And if we add 1 to that, we get y equals negative 7. So that would be the ordered pair negative 4, negative 7. If we use the 2x value, then we get y equals 1 plus 2 times 2. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So we get y equals 5. So that would give us the ordered pair 2, 5 for that one. Last substitution example, I'm going to take this top equation and rewrite it. So I'm going to add the x over to the right-hand side. So we get y equals x plus 4. If we replace the y in our second equation with that x plus 4 information, we get x squared plus x plus 4 equals 3. Again, this one's a quadratic since there's an x squared, so we need a 0 on one side. So I'm going to subtract that 3 over. So x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. Now, I will tell you that this one does not factor out, so we're going to have to do the quadratic formula. Let me write that out real quick. Replacing information in this quadratic formula, we're going to go negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4 times 1 times 1 all over 2 times 1. If we simplify some stuff down, we get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of, this ends up being negative 3 all over 2. We cannot do the square root of a negative number, which tells me that there are no answers for this one. This one does not exist. Another way to represent this is we could use this empty set notation. There are no answers to this system of equations. Next example is a graphing problem. And remember, in order to graph problems, we want to have them in a y equals mx plus b 
type of form. So taking this top equation, I'm going to subtract the 2x over. So we get y equals negative 2x plus 5. And if I graph that one out, I'm going to start with that y-intercept up at 5. So count up 5 spaces, put a dot there. Then our slope is negative 2. So I'm going to go down 2 over 1. And then we'll connect those with a straight line. Taking a look at our other equation, first thing I'm going to do is subtract the 3x over. So we get negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 4. Then I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. So we get y equals 3 halves x minus 2. So this time we have a y-intercept at negative 2. Then our slope is 3 halves. So I'm going to go up 3 over 2. And then we'll draw in that line. When we're solving things graphically, we are looking for the intersection point between our two lines, and that's the point 2, 1. Second example, we've got y equals the natural log of x. The second one is not in y equals mx plus b form, so I'm going to rearrange that real quick. So we'll subtract the x over, and we get y equals negative x plus 1. And then I'm going to graph these ones out on my calculator. I've already got the equations typed in there. In equation 1, I've got the natural log of x. In equation 2, I've got negative x plus 1. If we hit graph, the blue graph is our natural log graph. The red graph is obviously our line. We can see that those intersect at the point 1, 0. Last graphing example is a little bit of an application problem. So it says a shoe company invests $300,000 in equipment to produce a new line of athletic footwear. Each pair of shoes is going to cost $5 to produce, and we're going to sell them for $60. We need to decide how many pairs of shoes must be sold before we break even. So we're given two equations. One of them is a cost equation, and that's what we're going to set up first. So to set up our cost equation, it's the cost per unit. Well, it says it costs $5 per unit, so it's 5 times the number of units. That's what we're trying to find, so that's going to be our x value plus the initial cost, that's going to be our $300,000 initial investment. So there is our first equation. As far as this R equation, R stands for revenue, so that's money we're bringing in. There we take the price per unit times the number of units. So the price per unit is our $60 a piece. And again, the number of units is our unknown, so that's our X. Now what we're looking for is where these two things are equal to each other. So we're going to graph that out using our calculator. I already have my equations typed in, 5x plus 300,000 and 60x. I am going to change the window on this one just to get the information to fit in there. I'm going to make my x maximum go out to 6,000, and I'm going to make my y maximum go up to 350,000. When we graph it out, we should get a picture that looks like this, and it might not be real clear where that intersection point is happening. So I'm going to go second calc, and there is an intersection option. That's option number five. So I'm going to pick that one. I'm going to make sure that my cursor is on one of the lines. Hit enter. Make sure that our cursor is on the other line. Hit enter. It lets us take a guess, but we don't have to. What it's going to do is it's going to identify the point where our lines intersect. And it's at an x value of 5,454.5 and y value of 327,272.7. Now we were looking for the number of units. So that's our x value that we were looking for. So we're going to need about 5,454 or 5,455 before we break even. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.